Hello, everybody. This is Pastor Easley. I'm just waiting for a few more of you all to uh, to come on, and then we will uh, certainly be ready. Good evening, everybody. It's a good day to be alive. <coughs> I need you all to share. Please make sure you all share. Please make sure that you all share, share, share. Please make sure um, that you do that for me tonight. Please make sure that you share um, on tonight. Please do that for me. Make sure that you share. We're waiting for others to come on. On tonight, I hope that you're having a great day. It's about uh, 7.01, and certainly we know that we are waiting for uh, some of our people uh, to come in, just like we would do if we were in the sanctuary or in a classroom. Hello, everybody that's coming on. Hello, everybody that's coming on. I see some names that's popping up. Uh, Letha is on. Onique, what's up, Onique? Uh, is on. Sharon Taylor. Alvia is on. I need y'all to share. See, I can see you when y'all such. So I need y'all to start sharing it. Come on. Uh, that's your evangelistic, your daily evangelistic work for today. Um, it's 7.02. We're going to start in just a moment. Uh, it is good to see all of you here. I can tell when y'all are sharing it too. Some of y'all are not doing it, so I need y'all to hit share at least. Lonnie is on for Tima. Denise Smith, what's up? Jonathan Sampson, I see you. Charlie Lawrence, May, I see all of y'all. Regina, what's going on? The Mobley family, I see you all. It is good to see all of you, and I am grateful, so grateful for all of you um, for being on. So grateful for all of you. Uh, being on on tonight. I'm just giving a second um, just so that everybody, you know, I know some people are looking at the clock and like, oh, I'm, it's time for Bible study. It's only 7.02. Hope that you all have had a good day. Um, it's good just to be alive. Courtney Wright Thomas says, my first time here, we thank you for live Bible study. All right, Courtney, I'm glad you're here and I hope that you will come back again. And again, and again, we got 90 people already. That's amazing. Um, that's more than we would normally have in the sanctuary. But I can't wait to get in the sanctuary with my mask and gloves on. But we're going to be back in the sanctuary for real, uh, real soon. Uh, things are crazy. Uh, but I will say God is faithful. God is faithful. Um, and so... Uh, we got 94 people. I'm just going to give a few more seconds, a few more minutes, and we're going to take, take you on through tonight. Um, call somebody, text somebody, tell them easily is on. Trying to do relevant word Bible study uh, on tonight as it relates to the word of God on tonight, on tonight. I will tell you this. If you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, uh, turn with me if you would to um, the book of James and the first chapter of James. Turn with me to the book of James, the first chapter of James, uh, verses one through 18. Uh, that's where we're going to go for tonight. All right, hey, Deacon, Deacon Myers, Burnett, Trustee Willett is on, Janet Harper, Melody, hey, Melody. Suzette, I see y'all. Mine is a little delayed, so I don't see everything maybe as you all would see it, Brother Kerr. Um, so you may hear me see names that you've already seen, so mine may be a little delayed. So tonight, we just want to get started, all right? Uh, good evening. Welcome, everybody. We got over 117 people already. I think that's a good time to start Bible study. I really do. I think that is an amazing time to start Bible study. Those of you who are on the phone line, uh, I just unmuted you. Uh, I apologize, but I thank you for those of you who are uh, certainly on the phone line. Thank you all for, um, they said they were holding in silent. Amen. Um, so y'all should be able, can y'all hear me? One of you on the phone line, y'all can text me. Just want to make sure that you are here. Um, so we're getting ready to start. Our text for the night is James chapter 1. James chapter one, James chapter one, uh, James chapter one, that's our, that's our text for the night, is James chapter one, James chapter one, um, verses one through, uh, one through 18, James chapter one, one through 18, 
um, that is our that is our text for tonight. And so if you have your Bibles, please take some time to transition there uh, if you don't mind on tonight. Amen. Please make sure that you do that. Uh, can we just start off with the word of prayer? Father God, we love you and we thank you tonight for this time that we share and for your beauty of the moment, oh God, for your presence, oh God, we say thank you. God, we give you praise and honor just by the fact that you've kept us another day. God, we thank you for this word that we now take and plant into our spirits, oh God, that it may take root, oh God, and we may apply it to our very lives. We thank you tonight for uh, your hand of mercy. We thank you for your keeping power. We thank you that although the world is in crisis, you are still the Christ. And we give you praise and we give you honor. We give you glory tonight. And we say tonight, we declare that we love you, God. And so we give you praise and honor. Be with us, oh God. Open our minds, God, that we may receive something tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, and the people of God said, amen. So this is how you do that. Type amen. Type amen. Just type amen. And I need you all to necessarily please make sure that you hit share. So here's what I want to do tonight, uh, right before we get into our lesson and we read our scripture. I thought it would be good that we would expand our, our vocabulary. Um, our spiritual vocabulary uh, as it relates to things that are going on in the world. Um, I think we need to have some theological understanding. Um, and so what I've decided to do uh, is to give each week now that I can remember, we'll put in a definition of the day, a definition of the day. Is that all right? So this has nothing to do with the lesson. Um, but I just want to give you all definitions uh, that we may use in various aspects and in various uh, ways. So tonight I decided that this would be our first. Um, so you should write this down and have it. Um, it's only a definition. I'm just giving you all definition. I may give you all some theological terms next week or whatever, but I just wanted to give you all um a definition for the night, just because, all right? So I wanna deal with tonight, if you don't mind, I want to deal with institutional violence. What is institutionalized violence, all right? This is just a definition we can use. Institutionalized violence is a description of the indirect forms of pressure that are built into the very structure of human society and hence into human relationships. Lack of educational opportunity, poor housing, racial or sexual barriers to equal employment, condescension, uh, and so on, to maim and cripple human lives in apparently peaceful ways. They are structures, thus they are described as institutionalized. They destroy, thus they are termed as violence. That's the definition of institutionalized violence on tonight. And I thought that would be good because we are seeing so many disparities, disparities as it relates to COVID-19, particularly in minority communities. And a part of that is because of institutionalized violence. Don't you realize that there are structures in every society to keep us right where we are. And so tonight, I just want to use that. That is of no uh, part of our lesson for tonight. But tonight, I did want to use that uh, because I thought it would be good for us on tonight um, just to have a definition for tonight. And so here's our text for tonight. For those of you who are still maybe jumping on, our text for tonight uh, is James 1, 1 through 18. We're going to read this <coughs> very quickly. I need y'all to share. Please make sure that you share. Please make sure uh, that you share tonight. Please make sure that you do that. Um, and we're going straight to uh, straight to our text for tonight. Straight to our text for um, for tonight. Amen, James. Um, and here it is. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations, greetings, trials, and temptations. This is the topic. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. 
If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high positions, but the rich should take pride in their humi uh, humiliation since they will pass away like a wild flower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. It blossoms, falls, and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away, even while they go about their business. Blessed is the one who perseveres on the trials, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God has tempted me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does anyone, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted, each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. He chooses to give, give us birth through the word of truth that we may be a kind and, and kind of first fruits of all he created. The word of God uh, for the people of God, thanks be uh, certainly unto God. Tonight, we're dealing <coughs> with joy, uh, with joy in trials tonight. And that's what this text is about coming here, uh, certainly from the book of James. That's exactly what we're dealing with tonight. We're dealing with joy in trials. And I want to deal here, if you give me just a second, let me see if I can uh, certainly put this uh, up on the screen on tonight. Here we go. The joy in trials. Uh, that's what James is teaching us here tonight. And whenever you, particularly if you are a new uh, participant in Bible study or just starting to read your Bible, I would suggest, as I have done many times before, matter of fact, when we were doing Bible study in the sanctuary, many of us were there and we did a whole study on James. I went back to James tonight because I thought with what we're dealing with in the world, I think it would be good for us to learn and glean from the book of James on tonight. And so if you are a new person in Bible study, a new believer, new convert, James gives us, always gives us practical theology on how to live as a believer and how to face trials and how to face situations of, uh, that we as believers are faced with day by day. And so I thought James would be good, particularly in times in times like this. And so as we deal tonight, because joy in trials, what we are finding in this season of pandemic, social distancing, in this season where we can't really be with our loved ones, where we have loved ones who are in the hospital, many of them who have passed away, where many of us only desire to get a hug. Come on. Many of us only desire uh, to just be in relationship with one another. There are some folk that we have seen on a regular, used to see on a regular, that we have not seen in a while, only because we got this social distancing. And it's, for many of us, it's driving us crazy because we have been so used to being out and about going back and forth to work, getting in our car, going where we wanted to go, see whoever we wanted to see. But now it's it's we're in such a season now uh, that we can't seem to do that anymore. And so what we are dealing with on today is that many of us are going through a season of trial. You're living a life that you're not used to anymore. Uh, it's you you it's try it, this these are the times that test our patience. 
that test our faith. This is a season um, that just that many of us are losing patience. If you looked at the news in New York today, those of us who are uh, in New York, um, and certainly we greet those of you who are from out of town. I see my cousin Trisha is on. Um, I say to you, um, even the governor, even the governor has pushed back the time of um, that we need to be really on lockdown and quarantine, if you would, um, even until uh, the 15th of May. And then we don't know what's going to happen after that. Many of us are in at home uh, becoming teachers, teaching our children uh, and life for us <coughs> has been different. Um, and I know it may be hard. Hey, y'all, what's up, Carl, Elaine? I see all of you. I need y'all to share this. I, I don't want you all to lose to lose your joy uh, because in these moments, it can mess with your mind. Let me just say that. It can mess with your mind, but I don't want you to, uh, to lose your joy. And so what James teaches us tonight is talks about that although you may be dealing with a trial, you still can have joy. And I need y'all to know, first of all, that there's a difference between joy and happiness. If you are union, that you've heard me say this a thousand times, uh, uh, joy, uh, no matter what you're going through, you can have joy because joy is something that grandma said the world didn't give to you, neither then can the world take away. Happiness deals with happenings. And so when things are good, you're happy. When things are bad, you're not happy. But when you've got joy, no matter how bad the situation is, uh, you've got something like a fire on the inside of you. Come on, somebody. Y'all can talk to me this tight if you, if you know what I'm talking about. On the inside that just that the situation you're dealing with can't take it away. And so that's what I want to say to you. And I think that's the lesson uh, that James is teaching us tonight is that we can have joy in trial. I don't know if you can read it there uh, on the screen tonight, but I'm going to read it to you. In dealing with trials, our attitude should be one of joyfulness, knowing that God is at work in us through them. Our faith and our patience from God is fed by wisdom, which he gives to all who ask him. Single-mindedness in applying that wisdom and in exercising that faith is the answer by God's grace to our trials. Here's what I want to share with you. When you're dealing with trials and tribulations, you have to have the right attitude of faith in order to make it through. When you're dealing with these kind of trials, if your attitude is not right, you ain't going to make it through this season that we're dealing with. And I want to share with you on tonight that that's why that in this season that we're in, that is the very reason tonight why you have to learn that in this season that you're in, you've got to learn to know in your heart and in your mind that God is going to work this thing out. We don't know when this is going to be over. And guess what? This ain't the only trial that people are dealing with. Let's get that straight. There are some of us that were going through trials long before we knew what a COVID-19 was. But no matter what your trial is, you must have understand that you've got to have faith and you've got to have patience by God who gives us wisdom. You have to be single-mindedness in such a way that no matter what's taking place around you, you already know that God's going to work this thing out for us. Yes, we've lost folk. Yes, it's hard. Yes, we have cried. Yes, this is a, a, a burden for us to carry. But the truth of the matter, child of God, you ought to understand no matter what takes place, can I ask you tonight? You may cry, but don't you lose your joy. That's, that's what I want to say to you tonight. It may be hard, but don't please child of God, no matter what it is, uh, please do not lose your joy. You got to have wisdom in that. And if you read the text tonight, he talks about godly wisdom. Uh, he talks about having wisdom uh, on tonight. And that's what I want to share with you tonight, that, that wisdom from, you got to have wisdom from God in all of your trials, uh, that no matter what you encounter, no matter what you face, uh, you have to have wisdom in, with wisdom comes from God. And the only way you're going to get through uh, hard times and the only way that you're going to have some joy is that you must understand that you've got to be wise, <laughs> wise enough, <coughs> excuse me, you have to be wise enough and to understand 
that wisdom comes from God. He said, you ought to count it pure joy when you have trials because what? Trials produces something on the inside of you. And that takes wisdom. You have to understand that by wisdom. Wisdom from God in your trials. Wisdom from God uh, certainly in your trials. Wisdom is God giving. Let me just say that tonight. Wisdom is God given and God centered discernment regarding regarding God's world, God's world, and how best to live in it. Let me share something with you. It's not easy to navigate this world that we live in. Come on, y'all. Come on. If you've been living a day or two, you understand that it's not easy living uh, in this world that we are living in today. You understand that already. It's, it's just not easy uh, uh, living in this world that we are living in today. But can I dare tell you, wisdom is God-given, all right? Wisdom is given, in other words, by God. And wisdom, uh, uh, spiritual wisdom, is always God-centered. In other words, uh, God is the center of our heart and the center of our joy, right? So it's always God-centered and it's always God-given. Now, now, wisdom is God-given and God-centered discernment regarding God's world and how to best live in it. In other words, if you're going to navigate through these strange times that we're living in, then you must understand tonight uh, that you're going to need God-given wisdom. Come on, y'all. Come on. Listen, there are some things that they don't necessarily teach you in school, but you've got to have some sense of discernment for yourself. And so in these in these crazy times that we're living in, you need some God-given discernment, wisdom in your trials. And if you want wisdom, guess what? You got to ask God. That's what he says. Is that what he says in the text? You've got to ask God. You need to ask God uh, for it. And then Here's what I want to share with you. Although most of the time we don't recognize it, the scripture, we don't always see it in the moment, but there are benefits to our, there are always benefits to our trial. And when you look back over your life, I can, I can, I can say to you tonight that many of us are better because there have been some moments and some seasons along the way that we had to cry sometime. Come on, uh, that we are better because we had to go through something. Uh, we are stronger. Come on, uh, come on. Uh, we are wiser. Uh huh. Marvin Sapp, uh, and we are better. Uh, uh, and thank God he saw the best in us. Uh, we are better all because we have to endure some things. And that's what James teaches us in the part of this text tonight uh, is that there are some benefits, child of God, uh, that come from our trials. Uh, there are benefits uh, uh, that come from our, tr our trials. Look here. Look here tonight. This is what it says. Benefits of trial. If you Even if you go down, I think it is um, to, verse, to verse 12 tonight, I think you, you will see it. God reminds us that he uses our trials and our temptations in life for our good. Thank you, Jesus. Aren't you glad? Uh, aren't you glad about that tonight? Aren't you glad that God uses <coughs> our temptations and our trials tonight? He uses them for our good, strengthening us and leading us uh, uh, to rely more fully on him. Listen, uh, when we go through trials, it is moments of trials uh, uh, that we learn how to depend on God uh, in ways that we've never depended on God before in our life. Matter of fact, Paul even talks about that and makes similar points to that in Romans 5, uh, uh, 3 through 5. Uh, but if you look at our text, even uh, our text, even on tonight, blessed is the one. Listen at this, who perseveres on the trials because having stood the test, that person, listen to this, will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Uh, it, listen, can I tell you, there are benefits, uh, uh, there are benefits, child of God, uh, of trusting in the Lord. Uh, but even before you get down to verse 12, can I read this for you again? Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face, I'm reading this uh, now from our uh, from the from the from the scripture, whenever you face trials of many kind, get this. Why? Because you know that the testing of your faith produces. Good God, here it is. Produces, produces 
That means something is coming, coming forth. That means something is being what? Birth. That means something is growing. That the testing of your faith produces perseverance. That because you're going through something, that the testing of your faith produces uh, uh, perseverance. Uh, listen, there are some benefits to your trial. So we've learned twice, even in this passage of scripture. And as you look throughout scripture, you begin to realize uh, that even uh, uh, while you're going through your trials, you understand tonight that while you're going through, uh, that guess what? That God is producing something in you, that God has a way of producing something, uh, something in you, uh, that your trials come to make you strong. And I don't care who you are tonight, many of us tonight can testify that if I had not gone through what I went through, uh, then guess what? I don't know if I would be the person that I am tonight. And therefore, while you, you can even have joy because going through your trials, going through your trials uh, produces something uh, certainly on the inside, uh, uh, on the inside of you on tonight. And so that's good news for all of us. That's good news for uh, for all of us. Uh, and it talks about that uh, certainly in our text. Uh, and here's what I want you to understand, uh, that just because you have a lot of things and just because you own a lot of things, uh, here's what I need you to understand. Trials come to all of us. And here's what I've learned from from the coronavirus. And here's what I've learned from uh, what they call COVID-19. Uh, you know what I've learned? It's the great equalizer. You know what I've learned? I've learned uh, that although our lives has been our lives have been changed, guess what I've learned? It's the great equalizer. Y'all ought to hit the likes if y'all understand what I'm talking about. You know why I say that? It's the great equalizer simply because guess what? It has no respect of person. Listen, rich folk have died, poor folk have died. Come on, y'all. White folk, brown folk, uh, brown folk. All kind of people. It's, it has big. It it was the great equalizer, your child of God. It has no respect of person. Why did I say that? Because guess what? Your trials don't either. Guess what? Trials come to all of us. Uh, our situations sometimes lead us to certain trials, uh, but trials come to all of us. All of us. None of us tonight are exempt from the trials uh, and tr situations of life. Uh, listen, and guess what? All the things that you have, uh, that's what James is teaching us certainly uh, in the text. That's what he's teaching us tonight. Listen, that all the stuff that you have, this is what he says. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position. That's verse nine. But the rich should take pride in their humiliation, right? Since they will pass away like a flower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. It blossoms, falls, and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away, even while they go about their business. Uh, listen, he talks about here temporary treasure. Listen, this, this is what I want to share. A, material poor, a materially poor Christian should rejoice in his exaltation in Christ. The rich man should rejoice in the fact that his wealth is nothing and that only what he is in Christ lasts. My God, his treasure, listen at this, his treasured wealth is temporary like a fading flower. Come on, y'all. A materially poor Christian should rejoice in his exaltation to in Christ. The rich man should rejoice in the fact that his wealth is nothing and that only what he is in Christ lasts. His treasured wealth is temporary like a fading flower, child of God. I, I like that. I think that's something that we ought to learn about. Listen, guess what? Nothing that you have, nothing that you have is going to keep you away from the trials and tribulations that we face every day. Nothing that you have will keep us from the trials and tribulations that all of us are going to face every day. And in this situation that we're dealing with, child of God, although we're going through trials, I come to tell you, you ought to keep your joy. You may lose everything that you have. Come on. But can I dare tell you, child of God, only what you do for Christ will last. None of the stuff that you have is going to get you out of the situation that you're in. And here's what I've come to tell you tonight, child of God. In spite of trials, you can still have joy because your joy is not in 
the things that you own. Your joy is not in your possessions that you have accumulated. Uh, but when you are Christ-centered, uh, can I dare tell you, no matter what you're going through, uh, God will give you joy. Yeah. And child of God, here's what I've come to tell you tonight. When we begin to look uh, at the world and what this COVID-19 um, has done to the world. If you begin to look, there are many conversations and there are many reports that's talking about minority communities and poor folk and those who are living in poverty and how those who are in impoverished communities are, are struggling worse. You've seen the reports of where it talks about so many uh, African-American communities, so many of our brothers and sisters whose skin has been kissed by the rays of the sun are dying, uh, who are it's sick and hospitalized and how it's running rapid uh, in certain communities. Why? Because there is some institutionalized uh, uh, things that are taking place in society where many of our people have to suffer and seem to be suffering different. But I want you to know tonight, God loves us all the same. James has much to say about poverty and wealth. If you begin to read that, uh, he talks about that uh, poverty and he talks about wealth. God expects us to use the resources he has given us most. Uh, if you begin to look at, at, the, uh, at the text, uh, we understand tonight uh, that God uh, loves us all the same way, that, that God loves us all the same way, that no matter no matter who we are, that God loves us all, all the same way. And so I share with you on tonight that we are going through some trials. We're going through some tribulations. Uh, uh, but I want you to understand tonight that we've got to learn that regardless of what we're dealing with, uh, we've got to learn how to rely on God, uh, that we are, we don't rely on on the things that we have. We don't rely on uh, our possessions. We don't rely on our money uh, because what you've come to learn tonight is, guess what? That in spite of all of many, many folk, millions upon millions of folk are uh, filing for unemployment. Guess what? It ain't your job that's keeping you. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. It's not your job that's keeping you. It's the hand of a faithful God that is keeping you. And I need you all to understand that tonight. It is the hand of a faithful God that's keeping you on tonight. As you read the text, you understand that he talks about in the text, James talks about, uh, he talks about trials and he talks about temptations and he talks about tests. If you, if you look tonight, you understand, you'll see that he's talking, he said, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. That's verse 14. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. He talks here uh, about the difference really about being tempted and being tested. And I need you all to know tonight that there is a difference, child of God, in being tempted and certainly in being tested tonight. Can we talk about that? Y'all need to make me want to take some notes or something uh, on that tonight, because I want to share with you that there is a difference between temptation and test. In other words, uh, there is a difference that you need to understand, because if you read the text, he says, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempted me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away uh, by their own evil desire and entice. I need you to know tonight, I just, since this is Bible study, I need you to know that there is a difference between temptation and be, being tempted and being test. I said temptation versus test. There is a difference between temptation and test. See, the purpose of temptation is to bring out the worst in us mm. and for us to learn to overcome, uh, uh, listen, to bring out the worst in us and for us to learn to overcome. Fortunately, God is our partner. He promises to bring us victory in the midst of our temptation. I hope y'all get that tonight. See, the purpose of temptation is to bring out the worst in us. But aren't you grateful that you got a God who partners with us 
and promises us to bring us victory in the midst of our temptation. And guess what, y'all? Even while you've been home and been quarantined, I know many of us have been tempted. But guess what, y'all? God partners with us and promises us that in the midst of this crisis and in the midst of the temptations that we are dealing with, he promises us to bring victory in the midst of our temptations. Uh, but what is a test? The purpose of a test is so that both we and God can learn whether or not we can assimilate and apply the lessons of living a godly life. And here it is. When you are tested, you learn more. You learn more about God and you learn more about yourself when you are being tested. And guess what, y'all? Many of us have been being tested in this in this season and that we're living and we are being tested. But can I dare tell you tonight, I'm almost done. Can I dare tell you tonight uh, that in the midst of it all, it, though you're being tested and though we have so many trials um, and though life is different for us, I come to tell you tonight in this little short Bible study, I've come to tell you tonight, don't, don't, please don't, child of God, uh, please don't lose your joy. Uh, I want you to know tonight uh, that you can still have joy in the midst of uh, all that we're dealing with. Uh, and I think you ought to count it pure joy on tonight. I know, I know it's hard. I, I know that this is a rough season for us on tonight, but can I I dare tell you, child of God, in the midst of it all, uh, consider it pure joy, brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of, of many kind, because you know that the testing of your faith uh, produces perseverance. Uh, and here's what I want to tell you tonight. Uh, listen, God is producing something in this season. Uh, this season is not all bad. Yes, we're going to cry. Yes, we're going to be hurt. Yes, we have lost some loved ones and friends and family members and church members. Uh, but can I dare tell you tonight uh, that God is also producing something uh, and he may be producing something that you don't even see yet, uh, that your eyes don't see yet, that your mind cannot wrap around uh, Maybe God is producing something in you even now that you don't even see. And child of God, here's what I want to share with you on tonight. Hold on to your faith in the midst of all that you're dealing with, in the midst of all that we have, that we see, in the midst of all that we hear, in the midst of all of these news reports, in the midst of all the death that surround us. Can I dare tell you, hold on to your joy. Don't lose your joy. And in this season, here's what I need to tell you. You are to do some things that, uh, that make you smile. Do some things uh, that makes your heart go pitter-patter. In this season, I know you can't get your hair cut. You can look at me and tell that. Uh, I, you can, uh, can't go get your nails done. Can't go to the movies. Can't go out uh, to have a, a nice dinner. But here's what I come to say to you tonight. You can still have joy because here, here's what I want to tell you. Even though uh, everything around us is closed, thank be, thanks be unto God uh, that the kingdom of God is still open uh, and and God still hears you when you pray. He still walks with you. He still surrounds you with his love and God never fails. And that's what I want to share with you tonight, that in the midst of life trials and tribulations, in the midst of all that you're dealing with, I've come to tell you tonight to just hold on to your faith. Hold on to your faith. Please, please tonight, no matter what you're dealing with, can you please just hold on to your faith on tonight? Don't you let go. I know money it's funny. I know change is strange. I know that you can't see how, how you're going to make it down the road. I understand some got, some got a stimulus payment and some didn't. That's going to be gone real soon. I understand. I understand all of that. But in the midst of it all, don't you lose your joy and hold on to your faith. And at the end of the day, here's the last thing I want to tell you tonight. Listen at this. At the end of the day, I come to tell you this, uh, that in the midst of it all, just trust God. And I, I believe that there's a few of y'all out here tonight that you, if you are, if you trust in God tonight, here's what I want you to do. If you trust in God tonight, I just want y'all to write down uh, uh, in the comment sections tonight. I just want y'all to, to write down tonight, I'm trusting God. Come on. Uh, is there anybody trusting God tonight? Anybody trusting God tonight uh, in the midst of it all while tears are running down your face? Uh, just tell me that you're trusting God and that you're holding on to your faith. Come on. Uh, is there anybody trusting God in the midst of this? I know you've had to cry. We've had to bid farewell to loved ones, uh, but I want you to hold on to your faith uh, and I don't want you to lose your joy tonight. Uh, thank God that God gives 
gives us joy, unspeakable joy. Thank God that we've got joy in the midst of trials and troubles and tribulations. I want you to know that we have joy, that no matter what you're going through, that no matter what you're faced with, no matter how high your mountain, no matter how low your valley, no matter how dark your night, you can still have joy, child of God. And that's good news tonight because listen, many of us are going stare crazy in our homes, don't have, you don't know where to go. You got to put mask on and put gloves on. It's just a brand new world. And guess what? If you let it, it will get to your mind, child of God. Come on, y'all. It will get to your mind. Uh, but I come to tell you tonight, uh, you ought to just trust God. I see y'all. I see Deb Furby, Carol. I see y'all, May, and all of y'all. I see y'all. Y'all telling me that y'all are trusting God tonight. And I want y'all to know tonight, just trust God with everything that you have, with your whole being. Listen, the same God that has been with us in the past <coughs> is the same God that's with us now. And I want you all to know tonight, don't lose your joy. That's, that's the only thing I really came to tell you tonight. It's a Thursday night. But I, what I've come to realize uh, is that there's a lot of folk, child of God, who don't know how to handle, uh, that don't know how to handle this situation. I, I, there's a lot of folk uh, that don't know how to get through this. Uh, I'm done. The Bible study lesson is over. I'm just going to talk to you for a second. Um, the, uh, there's a lot of folk that don't know how to handle uh, this season. I want to share with you today, I talked to, I had to do a service today at Greenfield Cemetery for one of our members, and we are praying for the Ricks family, Brother uh, brother Willie Ricks, who was a longtime usher, uh, certainly at our church, um, who slipped away to be with the Lord in this season, and certainly we're praying for his wife, Sister Shirley Ricks, um, and so we, we, um, we bid farewell to him today. We had to wait so long. We I waited almost over an hour uh, to get into the cemetery, to get to the grave, uh, because they were burying so many people at Greenfield Cemetery today. So many people that they were behind as we would go in uh, with the family. Um, and I talked to the undertaker today, and she said, Pastor, you know what we're learning? We're learning that folk are not just dying from COVID-19, but we're seeing an uptick in suicides. Mm, strange, right? Because there are so many people that cannot handle this season. We have been in a, we have been living so long where we at our fingertips, we had everything we wanted. Life has been good for us, but now folk are losing their jobs, got to stay at home. Uh, the increase of abuse situations are up in the home. Uh, relationships are being torn apart because now we at home with folk that we haven't been home with on a daily basis. So that's being reported on the news as well. And so many folk can't not handle it. And it's getting to your mind uh, because we fail to realize that joy comes from the Lord. And so tonight, those of you who are struggling tonight, who are struggling to get through this season, I want you to know I'm praying with you. I'm praying for you in this season. Um, and I'm saying to you, this, if you allow it, this situation can overtake you. This situation can make you go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. But I want to share with you tonight, God is on our side. God is here. God is watching. God has never left us. The same that God that brought us through the last thing we was facing is the same God that's going to be here tomorrow. And so I am grateful uh, that we serve a God who is faithful to us. I want to share with you tonight, um, before we go, before we go, before we go, I want to share with you all on tonight. I see so many. I see Star. Star, we're praying for you. Uh, Star Hargraves Fulton is on and she lost her father. And we want her to know that we still are praying for you, Star. We haven't forgot about you, as well as so many others. Um, so many others uh, who are dealing with tragedy, certainly from our church. Um, we talked about the Ricks family. Uh, we're praying for our member, Sister Lucy Weaver, the loss of her brother, um, her brother, uh, Reverend Odom, uh, who slipped away to be with the Lord. Uh, uh, Sister Weaver, we want you to know we love you. And we're praying for you. Um, she lost a good friend, Sister Aura Hunter, we, that we've been praying for the Hunter family, and then she lost her brother. So this is a very hard season for many of us. We're praying uh, for Lily. I don't know if Lily McRae is on, uh, but I, we are praying for Lily who lost her son. 
who was eulogized, I believe it was on Tuesday, we called her to let her know um, that we were praying for her. And so we want you all to know that we love you um, and we pray for And listen, y'all, there are so many others that are dealing with so many things. We're praying for the Noel family. I think I saw Pamela on, on here today uh, uh, tell uh, Sister Bobby Noel that we love her. We miss her. We love her and that we are praying for the entire uh, Noel family uh, on tonight. We want you to know we are praying for them. Um, I understand we are praying uh, tonight uh, for Brother Arthur, who used to be a trustee at our church. I understand that he's hospitalized. Um, and we want Arthur to know that we are praying with him uh, and certainly praying for him uh, in this season. It's so hard because when people are in the hospital, we cannot uh, even go and see them. And so we just know that God takes care of us no matter what situation that we are in. Um, we are praying for uh, Deacon Holly. We are praying for uh, Deacon Holly on tonight that God will restore her and uh, she's in the hospital and we want her to know uh, that we are praying for her and that we love her much. Um, and so this is not just hard on, on those who are in the hospital, but it's also hard um, on the families who cannot get to the hospital um, hospital and see and see their loved ones. Amen. Um, and so we're praying. I want you all to know I got a praise report. Come on, y'all. I got a praise report. Um, uh, many of you may know that my mother tested positive uh, for the coronavirus, you all. She never suffered any symptoms, never had any symptoms. Um, she was asymptomatic. Um, and as a son, of course, we stress a little bit and we worry about our parents. And I just wanted to make sure that she was going to be all right. And, and I was thanking God that she didn't have any symptoms, but also wanted to make sure, um, wanted to make sure that uh, the virus was out of her system. And praise be unto God, um, she and I got tested today. There's a rapid testing place in Farmingdale, $50. Uh, you got a call, I think it's Dr. Fagan's. Uh, it's $50 um, and you pay it before you get there. Um, you can call, it's in Farmingdale. And it's a rapid test, rapid test. Uh, and in 15 minutes, you get your results. We went today. And can I give you all a praise report? Negative, negative. My mother came back negative. I came back negative. And I just give God praise and honor and glory because for so long we have been distancing ourselves. But thank God she was negative. Thank God I was negative. Um, and I just give God praise and honor. Um, uh, this is a time that negative is really a positive, a positive thing. And so I'm very happy uh, for a negative report. I just give God praise and honor uh, and glory to almighty God for what the Lord has done. Um, because sometimes you just want to hug your loved ones. You just want to hug your, hug your loved ones. And uh, I am grateful because uh, this virus is doing a lot of uh, damage on our seniors. My mother is a senior and I'm grateful to almighty God. Uh, that God has been taking care of her, taking care of us, um, and certainly in this season. And so I give God praise and honor and glory. I just thank God for all of you who are on the line uh, on tonight. Sophia, I see you. I've been seeing you, Sophia. I see you on here tonight. Um, and so I give praise and honor and glory. I don't know if we have anything else on tonight. Here's, can I just share this before we go? We're just talking now. Bible study is over. Uh, but can I just share with you all on tonight? I, I want to do a Zoom call for all of our members. I'm going to put it out there. Um, we did it not long ago, but I didn't give a lot of time. And so we only had a few members on. But I'm going to do a Zoom call. I'm going to put it out there. Um, maybe I'll text it around because there have been a lot of people that's uh, Zoom bombing. Uh, text it around. Um, and so we need to make sure, make sure that you're on our text system. Uh, please, so that we can send things and you can also get that. I want to thank the Union family. Um, I know this is live, so I don't want to say uh, too much and give Union's information out, but you all have been giving. Come on, y'all. Uh, uh, if you've been still giving to the church, you ought to say, I'm a giver. Just go on and put that. I'm a giver. I'm a giver. Come on, y'all. I'm a giver. Don't lie. But come on, tell you are a giver. Come on. We support the church. Uh, can I tell you that you all have been supporting um, and we are so grateful uh, for that. And we need you all to continue to support our church. I, we are happy about that because these are different times. And I do want to share with you all tonight before we go, uh, can I just say to the members of the Union Church, the greatest church in the world, um, I, I am grateful as your pastor um, to say that uh, thanking you for 
for supporting the ministry of the church because union has been around a long time. We are staple in the hymn said community. Uh, thank you. I see y'all there. I'm a giver. I'm a giver. I see it. I see y'all. Hey, Jackie. I see y'all. I see you, Pam. Um, I see y'all. Um, thank y'all for giving. And, and if you haven't, can I just ask you all to please make sure that you do so? Uh, please, please, please make sure that you do so. You can do it at any time. Um, but you do understand that although we can't have worship in the sanctuary, uh, that we still have an overhead that we have to deal with. We have scaled back as much as we can. Uh, but I do want you all to know I appreciate your giving on tonight. And and we have to say these things because I know there's a lot of folk who don't understand the work. And all the pastors are just begging to ask. That's not what we're doing. Uh, but guess what? Uh, ministry has to be financed and we have to keep a place over our heads so that we can get back to church. And so I'm just being, and if you haven't, uh, you can do so. You can even do so tonight. I just want you to know you can do so anytime. I do want to say this. If you are a person that does not have cash app text offer, you don't want to give online, all of that, because we did have a few people, particularly our seniors who did not want to do that. <clears throat> you can always go to the church and drop it in the mailbox, or you can do it the old fashioned way. You can mail it. Amen. And so I'm sharing with you, please make sure that you do that. I also want to take time to say happy birthday to all of the April babies. Amen. Happy birthday to all of the April babies. If you're an April baby, I just want to say happy birthday. We can't even be in the worship, but I still want to tell you happy birthday. Are there any April babies real quick? We get ready to go. Any April babies? Come on, y'all. If you're an April baby, just let me know that you're an April baby. Amen. Just let me know. Deacon Jeff, I see you on here. I see y'all. I see y'all. If you're an April baby, I don't see it right now. There's a little delay from what I see and, and you all hearing me, um, but I do want to say Happy birthday to all of the April babies. I see you, Toya, uh, all of the April April babies. And if you have not given, you can certainly um, you can certainly do so. I do want to share that with you. And here is that information. I also want to say to you tonight, also, if you are visiting us, um, if you're online and you've been with us um, and you want to give to this ministry, come on, I'm sharing with you tonight as a pastor, um, we'll be more than glad to... Um, to receive your to receive your gift, amen. And so I want to say to you tonight, please make sure uh, that you give. Come on, you can give as well. You can make sure that you give. Uh, you can give as well, certainly um, to to our ministry on tonight, amen. And so I do want to put this up tonight before I go, just for a second. So because I I do want to make sure that all of us um, that all of us hold on. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to be tech, techie and do this stuff at the same time. This is our information for online giving. Um, that's our information right there. And I'm doing that because maybe some of you didn't get it. And maybe y'all got that stimulus check and y'all want to go on and just be a blessing to the body of Christ. Amen. You want to, we want to be a blessing to the body of Christ. That's it right there. Um, we want to make sure that we are praying and listen. Yes. Yes. Tammy, I got it. Tammy, I got it. Yes, yes, yes. Because you told me I didn't have that name here. You told me. Um, but I do want to make sure that we pray for the father of uh, Tammy and Sharon, Reverend Sharon, uh, Reverend Sharon uh, Gordon um, and Sister uh, Tammy um, Ferguson. I want to make sure that we pray for for uh, her father. I want to pray for her parents. Actually, pray for her parents. Um, you do know that Sharon and Tammy uh, wonderful members of our church, and we want to make sure I, I didn't have them on the list tonight. Um, but I do want to say to to them that we are praying, um, we are praying for for your father tonight, and we know that God has been faithful to your father. And we know that God is going to continue uh, to be faithful, even in this season, this season that we are dealing with. And so we want you to know that we are praying. Certainly we are praying, uh, praying for him. We're praying for Arthur. We're praying for so many of the members, uh, uh, certainly of our church uh, on tonight. Amen. To God be the glory. I won't hold you tonight. Um, yeah, that does. Sister Andrews, I'm just seeing your message. Does that include former members? Yes. You once, once a union night, always a union night. Amen. And so April the 11th was your birthday. I just saw that. Today is Trustee Hall's birthday. He's uh, 80 years old. Gene Hall is 80. Amen. Gene, I don't even know if you're on, Gene, but I want to wish Gene Hall uh, the jokester, our senior trustee. I want to wish him a happy birthday. Gene, been around for a long time. 
Amen. Gene's been around a long time. Trustee Hall, we want to wish you a happy 80th birthday. 80 looks good on you, man. Uh, and so certainly we are praying for you. I'm also praying tonight for Tuffy, Tuffy, Tuffy. Tuffy lost a sister, uh, Putty. Um, and we want Tuffy and Melody to know that we are praying for, uh, for that family, the Shepherd family tonight. Uh, you are in our prayers um, on tonight. Bobby Noel, April the 1st. She's an April baby too. Amen. 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 So we are saying happy birthday to all of the April babies. There is a little delay. So I'm seeing things behind. And I know I, I can't get to all of you. There's a lot of y'all on the line. I can't see all of the things that you're putting. No, we got 194 of you on. And I'm, I am so great. Go ahead and hit the likes. Come on and hit the likes and everything on tonight. Can I dare tell you all, we had about 10,000, over 10,000, maybe 11,000 views on Sunday morning. Good God. Uh, and I, th now that don't mean they watched the whole time, but that means they did stop by for a little while. And so we are grateful for that tonight. And the only reason we can continue to do that is if the people of God continue to share, share, share. That is the key. That's the key. You got to continue to share. You got to continue to invite. And to those of you who are not members, God bless you. I want y'all to know I love you and I thank you um, from my home to yours. Uh, we want you to know that we love you. Can't wait to see you. Uh, I would say I want to hug you, but I really don't. Uh, I can't wait to see you wave at you. Amen. With my with my gloves on and my mask. God bless you. That's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be waving at you and, and uh, giving you a, a hug like this uh, when I see you. God bless you. Those of you on the phone line, we're glad to have you. Uh, we love all of you, and we're going to pray. Jessica's birthday. That's right. I see it. Jessica's birthday. Tasha's birthday. I see it. I see it. Happy birthday, Jessica. Happy birthday, Tasha. Uh, happy birthday. I saw you, Betty. I saw you, Betty. I saw you. Those of you on the line, God bless you. God bless all of you. God bless all of you. All right, y'all. I'm getting ready to pray, and we're getting ready to go. Um, I'm going to pray, and we're getting ready to go. Amen. Amen. Uh, my biggest challenge in this season uh, is that when you're at home, you eat more than you normally eat. So y'all got to pray for me. Pray for your, pray for your boy, because um, uh, that's one of my biggest challenges. But I still got joy. I just want y'all to know I still got joy. Cheeks are fat, but I've still got joy. Um, stomach is big, but I still got joy. I just want y'all to know that on tonight. God is faithful. God is good. Um, and uh, but y'all just pray, pray for me. God bless you. God bless all of you. Can we pray? Come on, y'all. Can we pray? Father, we love you and we thank you tonight for this day that you have made. God, we give you joy. We give we thank God for the joy that you have given unto us and we give you praise for it. I want to thank you, first of all, tonight for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross. Thank you, O oh God, for this resurrection season. And I pray tonight that the people of God won't lose their faith and won't lose their joy. That in the midst of the trial that we're dealing with, God, we still stand on your word and we still stand on your promise. God, you are so faithful. You are so kind and you are worthy of all glory. You are worthy of all honor. You are worthy of all praise. And so God, we lift you up tonight and we thank you. Tonight, I pray for Brother Gordon tonight, the, the, the father of Sharon Gordon, the father of Tammy Ferguson on tonight. I pray for him. I pray for uh, Brother Arthur tonight. I pray for Tuffy and her family tonight. I pray for Sister Lily McRae tonight. I pray for the Ricks family tonight. I pray for Sister Weaver tonight. I pray for the Hunter family. God knows I'm still praying for the Swint family tonight. God, we know that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. But God, you are the lifter, Jesus, of our head. God, I thank you tonight for being the lifter of our head. And so, God, tonight we thank you that you reign on the just and the unjust. We thank you, O oh God, that you love us just the same, the rich and the poor. We thank you, O oh God, that you are worthy of all praise, honor, and glory. God, we thank you for help and strength. I want to personally thank you for the test results of my mother and I on today. God, I just got so much to praise you for, so much to thank you for, so much to give you glory for on tonight. And so, God, I thank you and I bless your name tonight. We give you all glory. We give you all honor and we give you all praise until we shall meet again on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. We just say thank you, God. And God, I'm grateful that in this season of social distancing, 
that we don't have to be distant from you. God, you are still close to us till we can feel your presence. Uh, God, that we are still in the palm of your hand. Uh, I'm grateful tonight that this pandemic did not pluck us from your hand. Uh, and so, God, we give you praise. We give you honor and glory. We thank you tonight for this wonderful time together. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, amen. God bless you all. I love you. Hope to see you all or that you will be with us on Sunday morning. Goodbye and good night, uh, everybody.